In this video, we're going to look at another example of using the definition of the derivative, which is given right here, to find the slope of a curve for f of x equals this rational function for these two given x values. In the last video, we kind of explained how finding the slope of the curve at given points is the same process and concept as finding the slope of the tangent line for a graph at given x values. So what we're going to do to honor that process is we're first going to look at f of x and ask is there any discrepancies that we could come across that's going to give us some issues when it comes to trying to evaluate this limit. So what I'm going to do first is in the last video we dealt with a quadratic and we know that quadratics are continuous wherever they're defined in the domain. But here what we have is a rational function and we know that sometimes rational functions can give us issues. Namely, I want to see where this rational function is undefined, if it has any discontinuities, asymptotes, what have you. So what I'm going to look at first is the vertical asymptote for this function. And we know that vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator equals zero. Okay, so let's see what x value we have to plug in here to make this denominator zero. So what we get is we get negative seven x equals six, or we divide by negative seven, x equals negative six over seven makes our denominator zero, so what that means is there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative six over seven. I see an issue with that. We're asked in this question to evaluate what the slope of the curve is for this graph at x equals negative six over seven. Well, it turns out there's really no curve to find the slope of at this x value because what we're gonna have is a vertical asymptote. So f of negative six over seven is gonna be undefined and that's gonna cause an issue for us in our limit that we define to be the derivative. So what happens at x equals negative six over seven is the slope is not defined, or we just write nd. So slope is not defined at x equals negative six over seven, okay? So now that we've taken care of that number, we look at the other number that we're dealing with here, or the other x value, which is x equals negative four, and we know that there's no vertical asymptote there. The only vertical asymptote discrepancy we're going to have is negative six over seven. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go about figuring out the derivative at negative four, like normal, using this limit definition to find the slope of the curve at x equals negative four. So here we have f prime of negative four equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of negative four plus h minus f of negative four over h. So let's quickly come over here and just kind of fence off an area for some scratch work. What is f of negative four? So f of negative four is gonna look like four over negative seven times negative four minus six. So we get this, we can do the multiplication to give us four over 28 minus six, which works out to be four over 22. So we know that f of negative four is four over 22. So let's plug that in for f of negative four here, and let's also evaluate f of x at x equals negative four plus h. So what we're gonna have is the limit as h approaches zero of four over negative seven times negative four plus h minus six minus four over 22, and this is all gonna be over h. So again, we're dealing with another complex rational expression here where we have fractions over or within a fraction. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna pass the limit of this to see if this gives us our answer, if this gives us our limit. Sadly, it doesn't, because if we pass to the limit, what we're gonna do is replace this h with a zero and this one with a zero, and we're gonna get four over 28 minus six, which we figured out to be four over 22. So we have four over 22 minus four over 22 or zero over zero. So this limit at this point is indeterminate. After we get to an indeterminate form, we look and see, okay, is there any way we can manipulate this to make it not indeterminate? The first thing I may wanna take care of is kind of working this denominator down a little bit to see if it gives us something more easy to work with. So we have the limit as h approaches zero, a four over, we're gonna distribute negative seven into the parentheses, so we get 28 minus seven h, minus six, this is gonna be minus four over 22, that's gonna stay the same, we haven't done anything with that, and all still over h. And we can simplify down 
that first fraction a little bit more, we can combine 28 and minus 6. So what this is going to give us is 4 over 22 minus 7h minus 4 over 22 over h. So now that we have this, we see that we have two fractions being subtracted from each other. We can't subtract them yet because they don't have the same denominator, but we can easily make them have the same denominator by multiplying the two denominators together. And what that looks like is something of the form like this. So we have 22 times 22 minus 7h as our LCD. So we ask ourselves, well, what do we have to multiply each fraction by individually in the numerator and the denominator to make it have this as its denominator? In the second fraction's case, we need to multiply it by the factor 22 minus 7h. And in the first fraction's case, we need to multiply it by 22. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that multiplication in this next step and figure out what the limit is or how it's represented after we do that multiplication. So we get 4 times 22 on the top of our first fraction, so we get that to be 88. And this is all over 22 times 22 minus 7h. And then in the second fraction, we get 4 times, we're going to distribute this 4 into the parentheses. So we get, we're going to keep this subtraction there just for sake of we don't want to overcomplicate the distribution yet. So all we're going to distribute right now is the 4. So we're going to keep that minus there. So we have 4 times 22, which again is 88, and 4 times negative 7h works out to be negative 28h. And this is again all going to be over that common denominator that we found. And this subtraction is part of a fraction that's over h. So now let's simplify this a little bit more. Let's combine these two numerators into, or let's combine these two fractions in the numerator into one fraction, which we can do now because we have the common denominator. So here we get 88 minus this whole expression. So I'm not going to skip that. I'm going to write down what we have here. We have all this over that common denominator. And again, this is all over h. So now what's going to happen is we're going to distribute this minus, or this, what we understand to be a negative 1, into this parentheses to be able to subtract things in the numerator. So after we distribute this negative into the parentheses, we're going to get 88 minus 88 plus 28h. But what happens when we, multiply, or when we subtract 88 and 88? They cancel and go away. So all we're left with in the numerator is 28h. And this is still going to be the limit as h approaches 0, don't want to forget that's there. We still have the same denominator here. All that, and this is over h. And now that you see I'm adding in that understood h is over 1, you kind of can guess what's, what's happening. What we're going to do is instead of having a fraction over a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal to make it just one fraction. So what that entails is keeping this first fraction the same, flipping the second fraction around, and then multiplying it out. So what happens in the denominator is exactly what we want to have happen. It cancels and goes away. But then we see that we're multiplying this fraction by 1 over h. But we see that h is in the numerator and denominator of that multiplication. So we can divide it away. And what we get left with is the limit as h approaches 0. 28 over 22 times 22 minus 7h. So now that we're at this step, what we can do is we can ask ourselves, can we pass to the limit again now that we've simplified this down quite a bit? And let's see what we return. Let's see if it gives us an actual limit value. So if we pass to the limit, what's going to happen here is we're going to get minus 7 times 0 or minus 0. So what this becomes is 28 over 22 times 22 minus 7 times 0, which we said evaluates as 0. So what we really have is 28 over 22 times 22, which this works out to be 28 over 484. And we see here that both of these factors can be divided by 4. So let's divide them by 4 to simplify this fraction down a little bit. And after we do division by 4, we know that 28 or 4 divides 28 7 times, and 4 divides 184 121 times. At this point, we can't simplify this further, so this is the answer that we get. So our limit 
evaluated to be 7 over 121. But what that means in the grand scheme of this problem is that the slope of our curve, f of x equals 4 over negative 7x minus 6, at x equals negative 4 is 7 over 121.